Stratford. You were first there in 1956, is that right? Yeah. Henry V was yeah. the first one? Yes. Were you in the tent? Well, in the last year of the tent, so I got the feeling of what it was like. Yeah. And what was it like? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> of course I can't. Oh, it was just marvelous. And, I've always, and I say in my stupid book that's coming out one of these days that <clears throat> it's a pity in a way that the tent kept its fresh, everybody fresh because it looked like it was temporary, you know. It was something that perhaps might not last, this idea of a Stratford Festival. But God, we're, we're going to kill them while it does. We're going to do the best work we can do. And um, when the building the next year was erected, and I came up to play Hamlet in 1957 under the new building, it was all marvelous and permanent. But it had somehow lost its sense of adventure. And it's the magic of recklessness that the tent made us all. It was rather like a circus. And Tony Guthrie was a circus man anyway. How? Uh, in what way? Well, I think he, his whole attitude toward the theater was like someone who loved the circus. He was a ringmaster. Uh, the way he moved people around it wasn't like, like a normal director. It was rather like Le Cirque du Soleil, in, in, a way, in a kind of, no one was better at <coughs> at uh, filling the stage with running armies and swirling banners. No, no one was better than Guthrie at that. It was just brilliant. Uh, and he, his whole attitude of the theater was as if he took you, he took you as a child and led you to the circus. That was the magic of Tyrone Guthrie. It wasn't... Uh, and was he overpowering in rehearsal or was he ebullient or...? Oh, he was a ebullient, absolutely. And funny and he was an audience of a thousand people when you worked for him. Of course, you know, I must correct because Michael Langham was the one who directed me in Henry V, but I did work with Tony in Twelfth Night with Andrew Eggerchik and I had more fun than I've almost had in my life working for someone. I saw because that. <laughs> I saw you, you as Sir Andrew Eggerchik, one of the first plays I ever saw. I have memories imprinted from, I can't remember who played Olivia, but she's imprinted there and you're imprinted there. And It's strange how theater reaches into young yeah. imaginations and poof, yeah. presses for the rest of their life. You're far too young to have seen that. What are you talking about? When it was <laughs> <laughs> ah, well. The tent. Did you have to bellow? What were the acoustics uh, like? The acoustics were not as good as they are now, but they were pretty good, except on rainy nights. We had to sometimes stop, you know, because the rain hitting the tarpaulin was just deafening. And of course, the <coughs> the famous story, which is now quite well known, of of uh, the train that passed every night at a certain hour from the station and made whoop, whoop, whoop. Of course, it happened all the time during my very quiet speech about upon the king, let us our lives, our debts, us, and all that. The night, but the night before the battle, the quietest moment that Henry has on stage was ruined by this bloody railway train going through. And I yelled at Tom Patterson, who was the founder of the theater, in a sort of mock temperament. I said, you've got to change the time of the train. It's ridiculous. Every night, it's right bang on. No matter how fast we play it or how slow, it's bang on. It hits those, the gentlest of the words. And he's, he did. He called them up and changed the time of the train. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And how did it work? Well, it starts to rain in the tent. Yeah. And the company starts to raise their voices a little? or and Oh, yeah. We're still starting to shout and scream. And then finally, forget it, Charlie. Let's bring the curtain down. And would it be someone on stage who would say, time out? Or yes, I don't think it happened much when I was on. That happened in other people's productions. So I can't honestly say it happened to me. But yeah, they would uh, stop and somebody would come out and then they, the audience would patiently wait and when it was a little quieter, we, they would resume. Yeah. But it had a wonderful excitement about it. Yeah. And that's never really quite... Yeah. Um, we always try to catch the excitement of the tent in whatever we do up there. Yeah. Yeah. It is the question, as soon as you make an institution out of it, how do you keep the light? That's right, that's yeah. absolutely. 